Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install a uh, Genmon on Cost OS using Big Bear Cost OS, a third party app store. So, a little bit about this series I'm going over home labs, or installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse. So, Go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So, let's get back to your registered programming. So, this is what I'll be installing today. Genmon, Generac, and other models. A generator monitoring using R Raspberry Pi and Wi-Fi. Uh, you can also use uh, the open gen set, and that means that it's bridging and it's not storing all the data directly on the side of your generator with Raspberry Pi. You can actually uh, send all the data to a virtual machine. Um, today, we'll, we'll be installing it on Portainer. So, you can send the da uh, data through there um, uh, to the Docker. Um, so now this is what the functionality is. So monitoring a generator, a displaying serial numbers, there's all kinds of functionality in this. Um, so you can get SMS notifications and notifications on email, and you can also use call me bot, uh, the command line application, all functionality of email ability to, uh, to set exercise time and generator time ability to start, stop exercise and start an active transfer switch. Um, so now you can see the UI right here. So this is what the UI looks like, and also status, maintenance, outage, logs, monitor, not notifications, and settings. So that's what we'll be installing today. So I was fixing to create my own Docker file. Um, so, uh, but I also found that Skipfire um, from PintSize.me already had a Genmon add-on uh, set for it. So he's already got the Docker file set up and the Docker Impose, and the, the README here. So, um, but I wanted to improve this, so I built a new Docker uh, file, file off of this one. Um, so still credits to uh, Skipfire for creating the initial one. So I'm gonna go over to my Big Bear Genmon and um, to, to my uh, Big Bear Docker images uh, a repo and show you what I built. So now I'm going to start on Big Bear Docker Images, and I'm going to go in the Genmon, and then uh, I'm going to go in the Docker file. So I'm going to use the slim uh, image of Python, and then uh, I'm going to set the uh, the environment variables for Debian front end, and then the time zone. And then I'm going to uh, install the essential packages like Git, sudo, Chrome, and NetTools, and then I'm going to clean up. I'm going to expose the ports of 443 and 8000, uh, so that's going to be exposed on the container. And then the work directory, I'm going to set to git. And then I'm going to configure the use serial TCP to true on the environment variable. And then I'm going to clone the repository, and I'm going to go a depth of one. It's a shallow clone. And then I'm going to remove the git genmon.git so it cleans up the image and it shrinks it a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to initialize the application. So this is initialized at the genmon. And then I'm going to clean up the app to ca caches again. Um, so I'm going to copy the entry point uh, script to the container. And that's located over here. And then I'm going to make it executable. And then I'm going to set the entry point. So now um, th there's a readme version and then a Docker compose and then a entry point. So bin bash, I'm gonna touch the var log startup.log and make sure it's there. And then I'm gonna change uh, the environment variable. So I'm gonna cha change etc genmon, genmon.config. Um, so uh, the use serial t TCP and then I'm gonna put the environment variable in there. So now I'm going to start the application. So it starts it, and uh, this does need root to start. So that's why I didn't change this to another user. Um, so uh, it's going to follow the logs, and it's going to tell the log of var log startup.log. 
so, so you see it on the output. So that's a little bit about the Docker image. So now I'm going to start on Big Bear Cost OS. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. And I'm going to go over to search and type um, a Genmon. And then I'm going to go in the apps, a Genmon right here. And then I'm going to go in the Docker and Post. So the Cost OS app name is Big Bear Genmon. And then I'm going to set some services. And then the first service underneath the services is called Big Bear Genmon. The container name is going to be called Big Bear Genmon, and this is so Docker doesn't have generated a random name. And then the image is, is uh, coming off of Docker by default because there's no year before this. And this is the Docker image. This is the Docker image tag. And then the environment variables, you can set your own time zone right here. And then ports. So the host port and then the container port. Uh, the left side's on the host. The right side is on the container. And then same with this one and same with this one. So 8,000 is going to be the UI port. And if this does collide with another port on your host, you can change it to like 8,001 and only change the host side though. Um, so restart unless stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails in any other reason, then it'll try to restart. And then oh, we're going to mount uh, the host and the container so data app data app id which is dynamic and it's gotten from the name up here and then uh, get a genmon and then this is on the host side and then on the container side is get a, gen a genmon and same with these so now we're going to come down here with the xcross os information to explain the volumes and the ports and then we're going to come down here to the xcross os information to uh, to explain the app on the app store so the architecture that the Docker image supports is AMD64 and ARM64, and that's gotten from the image up here. And then um, the main service is Big Bear Genmon, and that rhymes with this up here. And then um, a description, the tagline, the developer of the Docker file, and then the author of the Docker Impose, the icon, the thumbnail, the title, and then the category. And then port map is 8,000. So that's a little bit about the Docker and Post. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down in the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So let's get back to registered programming. So now I'm going to start on my Cost OS. I'm going to go to App Store. And then I'm going to search for Genmon. And you also must have Big Bear Cost OS installed already. Um, so I'm going to go into it. Then I'm going to go to install. And now what this is doing is it's downloading the Docker image off the registry, getting extracted, getting it up with Docker Compose underneath because this is using the Docker engine. It's also setting up the binds. So you can continue in background and let it work. So now we can see that the uh, Genmon is up and running. So now I'm going to go over the container settings in Cost OS. So I'm going to go up here to the vertical dots. I'm going to click it. You can open into the web UI. You can set some tips. And this is like a notepad. So you can go in here and edit it and then press save. And then it'll reload the uh, container and say Genmon is OK. You can go back into the tips and you can see it did save. You can go into settings right here and edit these and then press the save button. Then you can go up here to a terminal logs and go inside the container. You can see the logs. This is great for debugging. And you can export the Docker Compose right here. And then you can exit. So you can check for updates. When Big Bear Cost OS uh, updates the apps, then you can come in here and check for updates and it'll get the updates. You can uninstall, restart, and power off and on. So now I'm going to go to the UI and show you it works. So you can open from here, or you can go up to the vertical dots and open from here. Um, so I'm going to go into it. So you see your battery voltage, your utility voltage, output voltage, frequency, RPM, and CPU temp, uh, engine, and then line, uh, last log entries, and then time. 
Um, you can go into the maintenance over here and you can see maintenance and exercise service g generator exercise time and you can change it to weekly, bi-weekly, and monthly. And you can set it right here. Set the generator time, stop generator, start generator, start generator, and transfer. And you can go into the outage over here and say, I see the status, logs, and then monitor. So generator monitor status, a communication status, and then platform status. And notifications, you can add an e email address here, uh, outage, error, warn, and then info. And you can take these on and put them on. Uh, uh, take them off and put them on, I mean. Um, you can add right here, you can add another email and ch uh, ch change what notification types you want. Um, you can go in the service a journal and you can add one, a repair, check, observation, maintenance, and then uh, set a save button. And then you can cl clear the journal, print the journal, and then you can go into settings right here, at general settings, and then generator model Pacific settings, and then web server security settings, uh, outbound email, and you can actually use a mail pit for this and send the email straight to it without having to set up a, uh, a, a server. Uh, uh, so, um, now you can set your inbound e email command pro processing and then a display current weather. Um, and you can press the save button. You can go, go over to add-ons. It's got quite a few add-ons. Uh, so Linux, uh, Tank Utility, MQTT, a, a DIY fuel tank, a gauge sensor, Amazon Alexa voice commands. And so that's about the add-ons. And then you can go in about right here and you can see the version. Um, you can submit registers, submit logs, backup, and log files. You can go up here at the top right and you can get to the live or register view, 10 minutes, and then one hour, and then tw 24 hours. So that's a little bit about Genmon's UI. So I just went over step-by-step -step on getting Genmon running on Cost OS. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video sessions or any community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.